Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. A scientist is transformed into a humanoid shark and must fight alongside the greatest speedsters on Earth to stop the human race from falling under the control of a gorilla with telekinetic powers. Today we'll recap the story of King Shark in the 2014 series, The Flash. After facing Zoom on Earth 2, Barry returns to his universe and spends his days trying to forget everything he experienced in the parallel dimension. To aid in this goal, Flash races through the streets of Central City waiting for the next meta-human threat to appear, which doesn't take long to happen. On Argus, a group of military men go to the aquarium where the king shark is staying and serve a large amount of meat for dinner, but since Nanawe is floating in the water and does not react to the smell of food, the men believe him to be dead and deactivate the laser beam that prevented him from leaving the water. While the military is preparing to fish it out, the king shark shows signs of life again and devours everyone in the blink of an eye, fleeing the Argus facility before reinforcements arrive. Unaware that Nanawe is on the loose, Barry is talking to Sisko when the leaders of Argus show up and ask him to start preparing for battle, because according to reports, the half-human half-shark is hunting the Flash at Zoom's behest. Observing the King Shark's trajectory, they realize that the creature has removed the tracker in the middle of Central City, right in the area where the lab and Barry's house are located, meaning that it is only a matter of time before they meet. Since Nanawe is a machine for eliminating people, Argus says he just wanted to keep him warned and asks Flash not to worry as their men are already involved in the case. However Barry refuses to be left out of it, claiming he will also hunt down Aquaman's enemy. Wanting more information, he asks Dr. Wells who reveals that the humanoid fish was a marine biologist named Shay who was hit by a particle accelerator, becoming the king of sharks and being recruited into Zoom's forces. Knowing that he will need to return to the water to re-oxygenate his blood, Barry asks Wells to try to locate him while Argus prepares an ambush. At the same time, Sisko checks Shay's records and discovers that he has an ex-wife named Tanya who conducts studies about sharks, so he decides to go to her to see if he can get some useful information for the battle. At the Nautilus Labs, Sisko and Caitlin ask questions about the particle accelerator and the woman reveals that Shay had early stage cancer, but that after the radioactive accident, it caused the cells in his body to grow absurdly and in three days he turned into the shark we know today. Wanting help. The two ask about her research with sharks and ask for full access to the files, but upon checking the data, they can't find anything useful at first. On the shores of Central City, Flash spends the day running around the water looking for signs of Shay and can't find any trace. On the other hand, the Argus men are not as lucky and end up being devoured by the villain, leaving him aware that he is also being hunted. With no idea where to look, Barry decides to go home and starts helping his foster brother with a college project when Nanawe destroys the living room ceiling looking for the Flash. Since he doesn't know the target's secret identity, King Shark ignores Barry's presence, allowing him to change clothes and leave unnoticed, heading straight for the street to confront the metahuman. As soon as he sees his target, the King Shark says that Zoom wants him dead, and Flash starts to taunt him, running around the radioactive fish until he gets a big punch that sends him flying away. With his target down, Nanawe begins to move in to finish the fight when the Argus men finally appear, forcing the mutant predator to retreat. After the battle, Flash reunites with his friends at Star and Caitlin tells him everything she has discovered from Tanya's research. According to her, the sharks locate themselves through passive electro-localization and that's why Shay was able to find Barry, because he can sense the electricity in the target system. Therefore, they can reprogram a satellite to use active electro-localization and create an electric field that will be able to sense the distortions caused by the King Shark. This way, they can locate their target and set up a flash bait on a buoy in the middle of the ocean, needing only to wait for the predator to approach and snatch the tranquilizer-filled dummy. Thinking that Shay has swallowed the bait, the Argus men begin to pull him to the surface and discover that the dummy is practically intact, meaning that the King Shark realized that something was wrong and released the object. Hungry. Nanawe swims towards the humans and jumps onto the pier where he is hit by shots from the soldiers, but because of his super tough skin, he suffers no damage and starts chasing Flash across the water. As soon as he gets away from the people, Barry starts running in circles around the Predator, creating a whirlpool and electrifying the water, which ends up electrocuting Shay and ending the fight at once. With this, Argus manages to recover the King Shark and takes him to the main aquarium, where they recruit Tanya to conduct research into a possible cure for her ex-husband. In the fifth season, far ahead of Argus, Sisko and Caitlin manage to develop an antidote for metahumans, as well as discover a way to turn the cure into something injectable, but since they haven't tested it yet, they need to find a volunteer who will agree to lose their powers. To do this, Caitlin has the idea of contacting Earth 2 and asking if any metahumans there want to be the guinea pig, however Barry remembers Shay and says that he might want to get rid of his powers. 
With this in mind, they go to the Argus facility and argue that King Shark has the most mutations of all the metahumans, so if they can use the cure to reverse his transformation, they can help anyone else who wants to get rid of their powers. Thinking it a good idea, the president of Argus leads the group to Dr. Tanya, who has now become an employee of the organization and is developing a way to communicate with her former husband. According to her, for some reason Shay's neural pathways were regressing and soon his mind would become like a shark's, so she decided to create a telepathic crown that stimulates the nervous system, preventing regression and allowing her to communicate with him through some headphones connected to the brain interface. In this way, Tanya can talk to the king shark even when it is underwater. Finding this perfect, the group asks to communicate with Shay and Caitlin tells them about the cure they have developed at Star, saying that if all goes well, they will be able to bring Tanya's husband back to human form forever. Excited, the scientist says that this might work and puts on the headphones to communicate with Shay, turning off the lasers in the water and asking him to come to the pier to talk to the star team. Not knowing if it will work, the king shark decides to follow the request and goes to the pier, jumping out of the water to talk about the cure, but before they can have any dialogue, something causes interference in the crown and Shay throws the object away. Running back to the water soon after. After the disastrous encounter, Tanya takes the neural helmet back and theorizes that the regression may have reached its peak, but Sisko insists that they try to improve the interface and suggests that she go to Star to improve the object. In the lab, they manage to make the necessary improvements and further amplify the signal from the crown, leaving only to synchronize the new frequency with their headsets so they can communicate with Shay again. At this point, Caitlin gets the shark's location and they go to the pier to meet the mutant fish in jeans, putting on the telepathic crown before he can react. From the lab, Tanya communicates with her ex-husband through the headphones and manages to get him to calm down a bit, but when Sisko approaches to ask if he wants to volunteer, the king shark catches the young man and starts crushing him with one hand. Seeing his friend about to be eliminated, Flash decides to go into action and injects the cure into the metahuman's neck without authorization, causing him to stagger until he falls into the water, returning to the surface already transformed into a normal person. In the Star Lab, Shay wakes up a few hours later and is quite agitated not knowing where he is, only getting calmer when he sees Tanya. Ready to talk, the man asks how he returned to human form and Barry explains that he injected the cure into him, but even so, they cannot guarantee that he will stay this way forever, because unlike the other metahumans, Shay has an animal part that the antidote could not eliminate. Still, Caitlin remains confident and reveals that with minor adjustments they will be able to create a second dose that will turn the cure into something permanent. Curious, Wells asks if he remembers the things he did while he was King Shark and Shay reveals that he has only a few flashbacks of what happened, but he assumes his crimes and says he will accept any punishment for his actions. Continuing, Dr. Wells asks why he ran away earlier and the man reveals that since he started using the crown, his mind and memories were much better, however something caused an interference while they were talking, knocking over the telepathic crown and causing him to go into a state of frenzy. Finally, Shay thanks Tanya for all she has done and tries to touch her, but suddenly his hand turns into that of the King Shark for no apparent reason, returning to normal a few seconds later. Analyzing the computer, they observe that the mutations are replicating and Barry suggests leaving him stuck there until the second dose is ready, however when he tries to walk away, Sisko and Caitlin go after him and start debating about what happened earlier, saying that it was wrong to have injected the antidote without asking first. Flash then tries to argue that he did it to save Sisko and that everyone was okay in the end, but his friends disagree with his methods and say that a hero can't make people do something, and accuse him of wanting to use the cure as a weapon from the start. After the argument, Caitlin goes back to work on the crown and realizes that something has caused a major disturbance in Shay's frontal lobe, causing him to snap and making it impossible for the man to remember what happened. Curious, Sisko asks if it was the crown that did this, and the woman immediately denies it, saying that the object never stopped working, and that even if it had glitched, it would never be able to do this. Thanks to this new discovery, they now wonder what caused the King Shark to go out of control earlier and begin to theorize about what might have happened, but are interrupted by Barry who appears to apologize for the way he acted. For some reason, Sisko does not answer his friend and punches him in the face, using his vibrational waves to throw him away. Knowing that something is wrong, Flash uses his super speed to arrest him and returns to see if everything is okay with Caitlyn, finding the girl just as she delivers the telepathic crown to the Gorilla Grodd, an extremely intelligent villain with telekinetic powers and superhuman strength. Under the gorilla's influence, Caitlyn attacks her friend with her ice powers and Barry is forced to trap her as well, releasing them when their brain activity normalizes. Wanting revenge, they try to use Star's computers to locate the crown, but thanks to his psychic abilities, 
Grodd is managing to mess up all the signals, making it very difficult to trace. Confused, Barry asks the Argus leader about the power blockers and the woman reveals that a year ago, while Flash was fighting a villain, all of Central City's technology stopped working for a few seconds, allowing Grodd to use his telekinetic powers to influence the guard to deactivate the blocker in his cell and get as much information as possible. Almost instantly, Caitlin assumes that the strange behavior in the King Shark was Grodd trying to control him, but since he has never tried to use his powers with non-human creatures, the gorilla was unsuccessful and ended up damaging Shay's frontal lobe. Intrigued, Barry asks why Grodd didn't run away earlier and Caitlin suggests that he was waiting for Tanya to finish the crown, and now that they have amplified the signal's power even more, the gorilla will be able to use the object to control the minds of everyone in Central City. While they are talking, Grodd climbs a tower in the center of the city and starts broadcasting a message to everyone, claiming that in a few minutes, everyone will be under his control and will do whatever he tells them to. At Star Headquarters, Barry decides to do something about it and asks Sisko for an anti-mind control headset. Even though he is not sure if it will work, Flash decides to go all or nothing and speeds towards the center, running around the gorilla and landing a punch that sends it flying away. Taking advantage that Grodd is unconscious, Barry approaches and tries to retrieve the crown. However, the telepathic King Kong wakes up and hits a hand zap that damages the Flash's headset, leaving him totally vulnerable to his psychic powers. Seeing the hero's situation, Shea suggests returning to his shark form so he can face Grodd, since he cannot control the shark part of him, but if he does, the man's genes will be super accelerated and make it impossible for his body to accept the cure again, leaving him in King Shark form forever. Wanting to save everyone, Shea accepts the consequences and asks Sisko to bring him back to his original form, enabling him to go to the center and face Grodd without worrying about his mental powers. In an insane kaiju fight, Nanawe runs towards the gorilla and starts attacking him, but the hairy creature manages to push his rival away by hitting him with numerous kicks. Still, the King Shark does not give up the fight and jumps on top of the overalls, landing several punches on his head and throwing him to the other side of the building. The gorilla does not give up and jumps on one of the pipes to confuse Shay, throwing a forklift in the direction of the enemy and climbing back onto the highway. To prevent him from escaping, the mutant fish throws another vehicle in his direction and begins to chase Grodd, but is surprised and ends up fainted with a blow in the roof. Taking advantage of the breach, the gorilla catches the king shark with a steel cable and throws him out of the building, leaving him hanging upside down from the crane. Seeing this, Caitlin assumes that he is paralyzed from having his nose pointed down and asks Barry to fix this, causing the hero to run at top speed to the crane and fire a blast of electricity. With the blow, both gorilla and shark fall off the building and run towards each other for the final blow, ending with Nanawe knocking out his rival with a super punch to the head. With this, the battle between monsters ends and Shay is able to recover his neural helmet, allowing him to communicate with his wife again even though he is doomed to live as the King Shark for the rest of his life. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.